Welcome to an edition of The Credentials. Who we have here is the illustrious Bryant Hall. He is founder hey. of Sweatshop 954. He's a uh, one of the the most important, one of the key trainers for for May Performance. He is a pit alpha man. He is a brother. He is a son. And the focus of of this conversation is honestly to to reconnect and uh, just talk about what you got going on. Uh, talk a little bit about your journey and just sharing perspectives. You know, as us as people that like sports and entertainment industry, you know, mm -hmm. and are, are not the talent or, or the entertainer, but we right. found out different lanes to stay in the sport and entertainment industry. So like I said, I just want to have a conversation, kick it and uh, get this perspectives out there. Sir. Yes, sir, man. Let's do it. Yeah. So real quick, man, let, let's first, let's talk about uh, the foundation that mm -hmm. that you were a part of and um, you were on a Zoom call prior to this. So let, let's get into that. What was that, that foundation? What's your foundation? What is it? What's the message? Tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, today be a perfect day to be able to have this conversation because um, it's my, my dad's uh, birthday today. Mm -hmm. um, so just to be able to celebrate. This is going on five years uh, since his passing. Um, so we created a foundation called the Richard P. Hall Eagles Foundation uh, me and, uh, with my mom and my sister. Um, and its main goal is just to be able to um, just increase um, a lot of minority kids' uh, visibility um, in terms of STEM, um, getting them involved, um, showing them that there's a past and there's ways to be successful with not just being a doctor, or um, being a lawyer, doing all these different things, uh, that there's so many more, so many more things that you can achieve. So just giving them that visibility um, and giving them opportunities to learn and grow. So absolutely, that is super dope. And honestly, I'm that's why I'm so glad you had the time to have this conversation because it's sure. knowing about the Richard P. Hall Ego Foundation and knowing mm -hmm. that it's an opportunity for kids that don't have the resources to hey you can go check out this and this potentially could give you the resources to do what you want to do. And so, and then, so tell me um, the Richard P. Hall Eagles Foundation, like, mm -hmm. so let's say a kid, you know, he wants to be in STEM, doesn't have the resources, he comes right. to the foundation. Mm -hmm. What what game, what advice, what's the steps for him to take advantage of, of what you all are offering? Yeah, so right now, um, we're offering, there's a scholarship that my that we do at my dad's old high school um, out in uh, Louisiana. Uh, so we're able to partner with them um, and give uh, a kid a thousand dollar scholarship, just be able to help with books or room and board or whatever that might be, just to uh, help lighten their load and give them a little bit more of a chance to be able to do what they want. Um, and then also a big part of our thing is just mentorship and networking. Um, just being able to connect people with people that look like them who are doing the things that they want to achieve uh, later on in life. I mean, we were just on the call today and one of the things that um, my guy Vaughn, one of my boys, uh, one of my dad's mentees, um, who is now an, an Air Force pilot being successful doing his thing. One of the things he talked about the most was like, you can't be something that you didn't see. So it's important to be able to connect people with people who look like uh, you and I or whoever we're talking about um, and it's just doing their thing successful just to be able to give them that that idea be like, yeah, I can do this. Like, you know, it's not impossible. You know, we can get it done. That's, that's, that's amazing. Shout out, shout out the boot, the 504, yep. shout out the boot. The boot, yes, the boot. And right. that's just, that's just dope. So obviously RP to um, Uncle Richard, you know, he is an Air Force legend. He's a, a pilot legend. So can you just give us some background about who your dad was and, and what he means to you? Absolutely. Well, to me, I mean, like I said, he's my dad, my best friend, my mentor. Um, my inspiration um, and just everything above, he's been my rock um, and all of those things. Um, but obviously to everyone else, like you said, um, he's an Air Force, uh, Air Force pilot, uh, flew for United um, for over 20 years um, and you know really did his thing, giving back to the community. Um, like I said, being a mentor, um, helping bring other young black pilots, uh, male and female up, um, and just helping uh, create um, you know, more successful people. I mean, giving people opportunities that they wouldn't have had in the first place. So yeah, man, that's, that's my guy. 
that's real that's real that's super dope and and like i said i mean we go way back i honestly going to your crib was the first time i actually played nintendo dreamcast and you yeah. had <laughs> intel <laughs> dreamcast yes sir <laughs> sonic man <laughs> so so tell me about your best friend like how how would you say like what was his like approach to to raising you if you had to be an analyzer and and take mm -hmm. what you learned and how you're gonna implement it to you know your kids. How would you say like his parent parenting style was? Absolutely, I say. Um, and one thing I'll say is this is about both of my parents, uh, my mom included. Um, their biggest focus was just helping me succeed in things I wanted to do. So whatever interest that I had, uh, whatever things I wanted to pursue, they helped me go full force into it. Whether it be academics, uh, music, sports. Um, extracurricular activities, whatever that may be. Um, if I wanted to do it, they're like, let's figure out how to go 100% at it. Um, so that was just a mentality that I was able to take with me um, going into pit, going into May performance, and now going into the sweatshop. Just be able to go 100% at what I want to do and what I love. That's, that's dope. And I, I think to your point, that that's the, that's the key, man, is just, and I'm realizing that, is just be supportive instead of saying, <laughs> you can't do something, tell someone this is how you do it. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? You can't, if you want to play and pursue professional sports or professional mm -hmm. singing or um, a professional actor, instead of right. saying you can't do it or there's no way, it's like, okay, it's hard. So this is how, what you're going to need to do in order to do it. Absolutely. This is the plan or this is what you should be thinking about in order to, to achieve that goal and what you want to do. So, and, and um, you know, to, to carry that on, like, who would you say, like, what would you say was like your mind, your mindset um, growing up, you know, like what, like, like your, like middle, like once you get to middle school to high school, I would say that part, like, what was a young Bryant Hall, like, what were you thinking? What was your, what was your mind on? Yeah, so um, for me, um, it was on a lot of things. For, uh, for example, um, just growing up, obviously, uh, like I said, my parents helped me pursue a lot of my interests. Um, and the biggest thing was it couldn't just be just one. So there had to be multiple things that I, uh, that I was doing, whether, like I said, music um, or pursuing academics, or like I said, pursuing sports. So obviously I uh, grew up playing basketball. Um, but as we'll get into a little bit later, I grew up um, with a lot of foot challenges on uh, issues um, with that. Uh, so I was getting injured a lot and um, necessarily couldn't push as hard as I wanted to or do uh, do some of the things that I felt like I uh, necessarily could have affected in school. Um, so I never really was like, oh, I'm going to go to the NBA. I'm going to be, you know what I'm saying, the big basketball star. Um, but my thing was just I love the game and I was going to push it until I couldn't anymore. Um, and the same uh, went with music. I was, a, I was a musician in high school, played the violin and the bass guitar. Um, and so with that, those are things that I was just able to use to express myself. Um, and just kind of keep my brain tapped into something else, being creative um, and just using that to almost be an escape from other things that I had going on. And then obviously with academics, um, I was huge in STEM. Uh, obviously, like we're talking about my parents um, with our foundation, um, trying to help those kids do that thing. So yeah, so that was a big passion of mine as well. Um, and just trying to learn and, you know, be, be talented and, and being able to do many different things. So yeah, so that was my focus really going up. So put me on game, like what exactly is STEM? Cause to be honest, yeah. I never science and all that. I, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't tapped in. I wasn't that. So like describe STEM, like what does that encompass? Yeah, so it's just pretty much like science, technology, engineering, and math. So it's just anything that has to do with those hard sciences, um, whether that can be biology, um, medicine, um, chemistry. I mean, we can go, you know, down the list. Um, of all those different things that, that go with that, so yeah. And so you got, uh, since it's, it's uh, Black History Month, do you have like a like a OG, like fun fact or like story or of like Black History Month that like touches you a certain way? One that touches me a certain way. Um, let's go with, um, I wouldn't necessarily say, when we talk about Black History, I think, you know, some of the things that get left out are, you know, some of the, the stories of activism and things that are happening today. Um, you know, we get so caught up in talking about, 
you know, figures like Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, and, you know, all these things that we talk about in school every single year. Um, but I think it's important to kind of highlight the people who are doing things now and actually affecting change. Um, so, you know, just being able to highlight the things that have been happening recently, like obviously these protests with all the uh, police killings, um, and just, you know, an overall sense of a need for respect um, for people in general. Um, you know, just that common respect for human beings that I think we need um, to just get into in this country. Uh, so yeah, so that's really what I want to highlight is the people who are doing things and who are boots on the ground now, um, fighting for justice um, and making things better for us. And, and I'm glad you said highlight those now because now is is the most important you know and now is the the time where i think it's it's dope that um as you said we're starting to to wake up you know yeah. so it, it's it's important that we highlight you know the progress now and it's if we look back too much we might regress back but what, what's so frustrating is that you know like when we have to read or listen to our history like this you know public or private you know because all it does is just put bad juju on us you know and put, because you don't really I mean because how we grew up you don't know about what happened until they show it to you mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not like your people's is in the crib like okay let's uh, just so you guys know back in the day this is what it was it's like we don't know that until they tell us right. you know so I, I think like you said it's important to highlight the now and, and what's going on and all the movements of just you know black and brown people just realizing even more importantly because it's not really up to us it's not about us waking up it's about uh, the others you know the other races like waking up into like oh this is real you know i think that's the biggest takeaway for me is a lot of people realizing like oh this is real deal like stuff and like i'm watching deaf comedy jam and it's like from the 90s and it's we're talking about the same things mm -hmm. you know the, like 30 years ago so it's more about for me is the fact that like you said the now and being present and acknowledging who's doing who are the people that are positively doing what and how can we support them so okay now let's let's talk about uh college right so mm -hmm. what made you choose pit was there like a strategy behind it was there mm -hmm. like what was your strategy behind being uh going to university of pittsburgh Right, right. So um, I actually started off, um, I was recruited to play basketball at Carnegie Mellon University, which is actually right down the street. Um, so I started going off, I was uh, gonna end up going there, um, do that thing. And then things kind of fell apart um, during that summer. Um, just ended up deciding that that wasn't gonna be for me. Opened myself back up to look at schools academically now, um, trying to figure out what I want to do. Um, and then going through, uh, looking at all the different programs, uh, I saw that Pitt had a great exercise science program. Um, and just something about the campus intrigued me um, and kind of just being away from, uh, far from home was uh, pretty dope too. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just something about the school that intrigued me and you know, I'm, I'm very glad that I did. I met some amazing people, had some amazing experiences. Um, yeah, and just really, really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So in speaking of those experiences, like what <laughs> would you say um, from an undergrad perspective is like, a couple of like college moments that were like, damn, that was kind of dope. Like for instance, one of mine was at UCF, like looking back, like my freshman year, um, that was when like Gangnam Style hit. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Like that was back in the day. And what happened was we went to the uh, student union and then like one day it was just literally Hitting them Gangnam Style, and then everyone yeah, just rubbing, crazy. Like, uh, like a festival type vibe. Yeah. So, like, do you have an experience like that at Pitt? It's like kind of memorable. Um, uh, well, kind of story, kind of like that. Um, uh, like you know when uh Sway Lee and uh they came up with the whole Black Beatles song. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Everybody was doing a little. Uh, I forgot what the chimes was, but everybody yeah. frozen. You know, Black Beatles, yeah, yeah, the frozen. Exactly. 
So, you know what I'm saying? They came uh, to do a little fall festival concert. Like, their song had come out, but it was before the challenge, like, really, really, really got crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so they came and was able to perform that. And then, like, the weekend after, you know, the challenge went crazy. So everybody walking around, sitting there doing a little frozen drain, doing the whole thing. So that was funny. Um, but other than that, I think for me, undergrad was more, uh, well, it was less about, like, you know, those, like, instantaneous moments or, like, those singular moments. It was more about just, like, the longer, like, life lessons that I was able to take away, just, like, being away from home, being on my own, um, and having to kind of struggle through things. Like I said, obviously, like, I lost my dad. Um, and so dealing with that, that whole situation, being a far, far away from home was definitely, um, definitely tough, but I was able to learn a lot about myself, um, how, I, how I do things, and just how to be, become a man, pretty much, um, how to grow up and make decisions for myself and, yeah, just grow up, <laughs> you so, know what I mean? So, I would love if, I mean, as, as comfortable as you are, like, kind of, like, what did you use to get you through it? Like, did you use, like, books? Did you use mm -hmm. therapy? Did you use, like, friends? Yeah. Like, what, what do you think you use to, like, help you overcome that situation? Because that's... Mm -hmm. That's major, you know what I'm saying? Especially for me, how I feel is like 16 to like 25 as a as a black man, black male, like you yeah, that you figuring out and, and like you said, the, the guidance mm -hmm. and exposure, like everything that bleeds up to that moment kind of makes you guide on what you do in those period of times and then like 25 and up, you kind of tap in and like, oh, right. this is what it in. is. So yeah. like going back, like if you can, like what did you use to help you overcome? Cause that's mentally, emotionally, that's that's real. It's yeah. like- Yeah, I'm, definitely like, a lot. And you, not everyone is like you, is able to bounce back. Like some people, Absolutely. you know, lose someone that close to them and they, they're, they're not the same. Absolutely. So like, what did you use to help you push through? Right. Um, <laughs> and I know it's funny to say, like, you know, something that I've overcome because I don't, I don't necessarily look at it that way. I don't look at it as something that I uh, overcame um, because it's still something that I think about all the time. Obviously, like I love my dad and I miss him and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but just being able to persevere through, you know, school and what was going on. Um, at first, you know, I didn't deal with it the right way. Uh, to be honest, you know, I wasn't getting my work done just wasn't productive and, you know, adding to the relationships uh, with my friends and, you know, people that I was around. Um, so yeah, it was definitely something difficult to deal with at first. Um, but as you as you go on, um, you know, I had an amazing support system of friends down here and up there uh, who were able to just hold me down and uh, help me uh, start to get back on the right track. Um, and yeah, so I, I, would, I would definitely say the biggest thing was, you know, the group of people that I had around me who were able to help me rally and get myself back together. Um, but the biggest thing, I mean, I think when it comes to grief and losing people and just dealing with, you know, depression and anxiety in general, um, is people have to be okay with giving themselves time. Um, you know, one thing that I tried to do is I tried to muscle through it. Uh, like right after my dad passed, my dad passed in the summer. Um, and I went back to school, you know, after we had three services for my dad, um, one down, uh, one down here in South Florida, one in Louisiana, um, and then one at the Air Force Academy, uh, where we finally laid him to rest. But um, so it was a whole lot going on with that whole lot of travel, a whole lot of rehashing and all those kind of yeah. things. But then you know, I tried to muscle through it and go right back to school um, in that fall. And you know, one thing my mom, you know, really tried to tell me was like, hey, like it's okay if you want to take a semester as well, if, you know, just kind of get your head together, get your mind right, relax and do your thing. Um, but one thing that I think, you know, men, black people, young people, people in general, uh, kind of have this feeling of where they, you know, they can't take no no days off. They got to keep going hard, hard, hard. Um, and sometimes you just have to be able to know yourself and understand when you need to take a step back and recollect your thoughts and kind of just refocus and, and get on uh, get on the same page with yourself. Um, and so obviously, like I said, it, it put me back a little bit, um, but I was finally able to graduate in December. Um, you know, and going through those things, I was able to learn a lot, like I said, about myself and, you know, just how I'm growing as a man, and you know, how I'll navigate life moving forward. Mm -hmm. So I, I, like I said, I, I appreciate you saying that because I mean, it's mm -hmm. to your point, it's, it's, I, I think about my uncle Chris every night, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like every day at some point, you know what I'm saying? He passed away 
when I was like nine, ten. Yeah. You know, so yeah. It, it's to your point, like you don't ever get through it. You don't ever, you don't ever stop thinking about it. However, right. you have to move forward. You know, it, to your point, Absolutely. and and also it's it's. I'm glad you kind of shared that. You know, it wasn't like immediate bounce back. It was a struggle mm -hmm. because I, I think all of us, when we get to that college, independent, and we yeah, it's a baggage, different ball game. Yeah, yeah you dealing with some baggage. You're gonna let it out the wrong way. You know, like. I, I probably like excessive, like excessive partying, you know what I'm saying? Like once you have age, you know, excessive drinking, like that's, that's, that's real spill. And it's important to, you know, that we, we share that you mm -hmm. be careful because that's not the right way. You, and we both realize that's not the right way. It's more of what you said, like just having conversations, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Having yeah. people that you cool with, that you can vent and let some yeah. shit go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I mean, uh, and I want to definitely be clear about that um, is, of course, it started off with conversations with my friends and, you know, the people around me. Um, but at some point, it definitely turned into, you know, I need to sit down and have an actual conversation with a licensed professional um, and have, you know, be able to sit in that therapy space and be able to really talk to somebody who really knows what's going on. Because it's one thing just to be able to vent and speak openly to your friends, just get things off your chest. But what you really need sometimes is help being able to internalize these feelings and how to move forward and really how to process these things. Um, so I will say that also professional help um, was a huge help um, in my development of being able to come back and, you know, starting to really be productive again and doing my thing. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it's just like, it's just like a, a, a good book where it's yeah. like, I mean, because like that's the, that's the, that's the equivalent in my mind because it's like you're getting decades of experience of wisdom of yeah. situational management in minutes and hours and days you know Absolutely. so it is important and, and the thing is i think in our culture it's like it's not talked about because we don't know how how impactful the benefits are we don't, we don't really realize like how impactful the benefits of books and therapy you know, yeah. of different sorts of conversations, honestly. Not yeah. even maybe just uh, conversations. Yeah, it's small. Real productive conversations that are moving the ball forward. You know, mm -hmm. so and, and also in moving the ball forward. And you like you said, you had a, a vision for, for the future. So what mm -hmm. made you choose um being an alpha man at, at Pitt? Yes, sir. Um so, number one, uh, my grandfather and both of my uncles um, and a lot of the men um, in my life uh, growing up um, were alpha men. Um, so I was able to see the brotherhood. I was able to see how they conducted themselves in their business. Um, I was able to see how they raised their families um, and how people in the community looked up to them, respected to them, and looked to them um, in times of need and when they needed direction and leadership. Um, so it was something that I admired. Um, it was. It was something I looked up to um, and I, you know, wanted to be able to be a part of that. Um, and so one conversation that I think was important for me was growing up uh, with a lot of these men is it was never forced upon me like, hey, like, you know, we're doing this because I'm an alpha or I'm trying to do all these things because I'm an alpha man. But that was just how they all live their lives. You know what I'm saying? It was just a common thread. Um, so that was one thing that. You know, I really liked uh, about it was it wasn't pushed upon me. It was just something that, you know, they let me observe and see, um, you know, as I, as I grew up. But once I got to campus, um, you know, the biggest thing for me was just seeing how everybody was vibing, how everybody was doing their thing. Um, and they and they were what caught my attention. Um, the guys on campus, you know, shout out, shout out to my guys. But, um, you know, they were doing their thing. Everybody was in leadership positions on campus. Everybody was affecting change. Everybody was, you know, having positive relationships with people on campus, um, you know, and just and just doing things that I wanted to do. Um, so, you know, I always thought that Iron Sharp Design and I wanted to be around, you know, the great men on campus and the ones that I view were alpha men. Uh, so that's, that's what I did. So, so, so dope. I'm, I'm so glad that you shared that the, the benefits of, of joining a fraternity and what it did. Honestly, that was the same, same thing I was on. I was on, I want to join a fraternity for for the relationships of being surrounded by people that are doing great things because i i just knew 
circle of influence, you know, going back to yeah. when I was uh, selling knives back in the day. Yeah. But I knew the importance of the people around you are gonna be the reflection of you. So if I hang around enough solid people, then, or people that are way above me, then I know I'm naturally just gonna get lifted up in order Absolutely. to catch up, you know, because we all play a one form or another of keeping up with the Joneses. So I, I think I, I'm so glad you shared that because I think it's important that, you know, like I said, our culture realized like the, the value of a fraternity, you know, um, of, of some sort. Uh, and uh, also when you're thinking about a fraternity, think about the long term and not the short term. That was one thing. Yeah, I was um, it's like, okay, cool. Like, right. some of them were more focused on, I'm just trying to, party and, and be facey quote unquote when I was just like I mean that's cool but 20 years down the line I'd rather have relationships with doctors lawyers businessmen bankers and uh you know business people as opposed to mm-hmm. you know back in the day we crushed it you know what I mean like <laughs> <laughs> well, what is that gonna do for us you know what is that really gonna do for us so also you know, one thing I want to add to that one thing I want to add to that was um especially with Alpha, one thing that I was, you know, really intrigued by is just the, the opportunity to give back um, and not just necessarily to get, uh, to receive so much, so many benefits like we listed off, which are all great, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like I have things that I can give back to my community. Um, and Alpha is, you know, one of the best platforms to be able to do so. Um, so I was just, you know, also intrigued by just the ability that it gave me to be able to reach a lot of, a lot of young black men um, and just black people in general to be able to help. Can you talk about some dope experiences of you either working with Alpha or just working at, or like your internship experiences while you're in college? Okay, yeah. So, um, well, just one experience um, with Alpha, and this kind of geared towards like well, all the things that we've been talking about already. Uh, we used to read um, to an elementary school uh, like the first Friday of every month. Um, so we would, so we would go in there um, and be assigned a classroom and be able to talk and do our thing. Um, but one day I was able to go in uh, with a couple of my line brothers and uh, other frat brothers. Um, and the kids, uh, they looked at us and, you know, me and my me and my guys, we're all pretty tall. Um, so they automatically assumed, like, oh, man, like, these are basketball players. Like, you know, I want to be on his team, da 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 So the kids were asking me, oh, do you play basketball? And I was like, nah, I mean, I don't, I don't play right now, but I'm actually studying to be a coach. They're like, oh, what kind of coach? And I was like, well, helping them with their strength and conditioning, with their lifting and stuff like that, helping them get bigger, faster, stronger. So the kids were like, hey, man, like, maybe I want to be a coach. Like, you know, and the kids were starting to realize like there's more to, there's more to, like you said, being a being an athlete and actually being the product um, in terms of helping people become the athlete, becoming that product. And you really actually get to get your hands on a whole lot more people and be able to affect more change in a broader scheme um, than just, you know, I'm putting the ball in the basket, I'm doing my thing, I'm getting my money and I'm out of here. And obviously there's nothing wrong with that. If you can do it, go get your bread, young man. But you know what I'm saying? But first of all, you know, everybody can't do that. Um, and second of all, you know, some people just have that, have that ability to be able to help others. Um, and so that's for me, what I was able to do. And that was really cool for me to be able to, again, show them something that they might not have seen. Um, Cause they only see guys uh, growing up to become the players, not necessarily be the coaches, uh, front office um, positions and all these other all these other important roles that go into making that game run so yeah so that was that was definitely a cool experience for me um, just to be able to show those kids another side of the sport world um so yeah yeah and and to your point that's why I, I love this conversation because it's it's too to your point of like we're all like where can we start where can we start where can we start like we could just start in our community you know yeah I- the purpose of the credentials is to be timeless so that you know every middle school high schooler elementary schooler can can see our conversation and see that oh this translates this translates this translates you know I, I that's why like I'm so glad you you're sharing that because it also is you know it's it's kind of like it's disrespectful to ourselves that we're only only seen as athletes and entertainers you know like like at university of florida for instance like i okay at first when like you oh is that a, oh, odell is that odell like all right, <laughs> all right that's funny that's, that's cool yeah. all right but then it's like 
constantly, 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 like, you football team, you football team, you, like, 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 is that the yeah. only way I can make it to this school? Right. Like, like you, I had never been asked, oh, what's your major? You know what I'm saying? Like, normal conversation would be like, with a normal, quote unquote, normal student, be like, all right, what's your major? Oh, mommy, I'm, I'm the, my, exactly. are you a football player? Are you an athlete? Are you, are you, are you celebrity? Are you, it's like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, like, I, I think that's important to let, let our people know like there's multiple ways to to be in this business like for me i had a chance to work in corporate partnerships so i got a chance to be in in the deals where it's like the you know pepsi stadium of right. florida state like i would be in those deals with pepsi with their reps and the things and and realizing like oh you could do all this and yeah. get to have a chance to sit courtside at the games like oh Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we can still be a part of the experience and there's still mm -hmm. opportunities to make money without being, you know, the entertainment or, or the talent. And it, But it goes back to what you're saying. It goes back to exposure. You got to yeah. be exposed to it. Like for me, the only way I got the opportunity, because my teacher, me and him, Dr. Pappas, he was on the first episode. He brought the, the opportunity to me, you know, and mm -hmm. said, hey, this might be a good fit for you. If it wasn't for him, I would have never even known about. I didn't even know. I always thought those deals were just given to the to the team. Like they were done. Sure. Yeah, I didn't know that you can negotiate that. I didn't know like there's salespeople for that. And it, right. like part of your job is just taking them to the game and sitting in the the luxury and just spoiling the client. Like what? <laughs> I can pay for that too. <laughs> it's just it's just like things like that. I think is um is really important. And that's why I like this conversation is dope. So like. Okay, let's transition now into um, you know May the May performance. Like, how did you build that relationship? Because it's funny, I when I was at UCF, I I think homie was there, and I remember him used to yep. hoop like like because you know at UCF there's like three four courts, and like mm -hmm. the third court was like the competition run, and like I remember he would be in the runs, and um to see his his growth and his elevation is dope. So like, how'd you build that connection. Absolutely, man. First of all, I want to shout out two guys, man. My guy, Hasib, the Sihi, man, my, my guy, my mentor, um, somebody who really put me on. Um, I linked up with him. Um, actually, when I used to go out to IMG Academy, I was right in Florida. I used to go out there during the summer. A uh, family friend of ours um, was a was the uh, basketball, president of basketball operations at IMG. Um, so, he was, so he was running his thing. So I'll be able to go up there in the, uh, during the summer for a week and just be able to train and, and work out and just be able to see how guys were, how pros were doing their thing out there. Um, so when I would go out there, um, he was he was one of the coaches there, um, coaching the camps, um, helping the kids train. But he was also um, training some of the pros out there. So I was able to see, um, even though we go through the camp uh, all day, do little drills or whatever. Um, but before and after, I would always be there like, hey, man, like, training so and so today like let me watch like hey like what are you what are you doing with x y and z today uh, just because i was purely curious uh, i just wanted to know like i just wanted to see like how these nba guys do their thing so i was like you know i just, just want to know i want to see what this level like, i love the game still i love the game still yeah, yeah. 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 so, it, it was cool um yeah who junkies like, love was, yeah absolutely but he was so gracious um just being able to open the gym um, and give me an opportunity to see these guys work. Um, and then eventually, once I started getting older, um, I would hit them up and be like, hey man, I'm trying to work, you know what I mean? This is when I'm starting to get into high school and starting to play or whatever, um, and playing on these high level teams with guys who are, you know, now playing division one, high major and overseas. Um, and so I'm like, I gotta get my stuff together. So I'm like, hey bro, um, let's get some work in. He ended up moving down to Miami, um, moving back down to Miami because he was but yeah, so being able to work school? with him. So what? While you were in high school? Yeah, so while I was in high school, yeah, he okay. came back down here. Um, so it was perfect, we were able to connect. Um, and it's funny, him and my dad became close. Uh, just obviously my dad taking me to workouts um, and watching that the care he had for my game. Um, even though, you know, I wasn't no ESPN top 100 player by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> but um, just, uh, just the care that he put into my game. In fact, he made me feel like I was, you know what yeah. I mean? 
um, and just you know making me motivated to get better each and every day. Um, I was just gra- I gravitated towards that. His positive energy and all those things. So man, I gravitated towards that. Just kept asking questions, kept being like, hey man, I want to be around. I want to do whatever. I'll I'll rebound. I'll help. Whatever man, just let me know. Um, and he just kept giving me opportunity after opportunity. Uh, I started off a couple years ago, probably about going on four years now. Um, just uh, being able to work with him privately. He's been training guys like Jay Crowder, um, a whole bunch of other NBA guys, college athletes, overseas players, um, and just guys that you know you see on TV. Um, and you're able to really be in the gym and get in the trenches with them and see what that work is really about. Um, so yeah, it's just been an amazing experience. He's taught me so much. Um, let me let me grow. Um, obviously, in the beginning, it was more of just me rebounding, me watching and learning. Um, and then it started off to be more all right, I'm starting to talk to you now more about what I'm doing, starting to put you on game and explain to you why I'm doing these certain movements, why I'm having this guy go at this time, why I'm having to do these certain things and not him. And, you know, just being able to understand programming and all those different things. Um, and then it got to the point where he started, you know, really letting me run some things, uh, helping me, uh, you know, if he wasn't able to make it, let me run a workout. Um, if we're sitting there planning a program for a player, um, he'll, he'll let me uh, put some input in and, kind of let me think out loud as to like what I would do in this situation or give him some suggestions as to what we should incorporate um, into their team's philosophy and some things that he already had planned. Um, but yeah, just give me the opportunity to learn and grow my wings. And, you know, just, I mean, spread my way, same thing. But just to be able to be in a position um, that I know so many more qualified adults would kill for, you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm just so thankful to him um, just being able to teach me and take me under his wing. Uh, to be able to do his thing. Um, and then my guy T. Seymour, um, my guy Torrance, um, just being able to help me um, kind of expand outside of the basketball realm. Um, he's a, a, one of the other trainers with made performance. Um, and, you know, he's really put me on to a lot of game, especially in terms of speed and agility, um, in terms of like a lot of power lifting, um, and working with like uh, more football um, and just the general population. So he's been able to help me uh, understand, especially with uh, being able to get ready for the sweatshop, um, just to understand programming, how to understand um, working with multiple clients at one time, how to build how to build programs that are versatile um, for multiple people, uh, multiple goals, um, and you know just locking in that that kind of trainer's um, personality, uh, how to interact with how to interact with your clients, um, and just kind of those those little things, um, and then just being a big brother. I mean, we hang out, we chill, we kick it. Um, you know, just just hanging out with both of them, um, and them just looking out and really looking out for me. For it. So yeah, man, shout out to them. They put me on. So that's that's like once again, that's dope. And and I think to to summarize what you said, what mm-hmm. I heard was you know your passion. Who? Yeah. Who is my passion. Like I love hoop. You know what I'm saying? Like I I love the game of basketball. So that's your passion. Then you figured, hey, I'm gonna ask, cause yeah. closed mouths or won't get fed. Or you can say it's dumb. Yeah, right. So then I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna yeah. ask my passion. So I'm not gonna ask. And then after that, yeah. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make. I'm gonna provide value. I'm gonna yeah. do whatever. And yeah. once I, while I'm providing value, I'm gonna take notes and soak up game. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then after Absolutely. that. I'm going to implement and action and then plan. And that's it. Just rinse, recycle, repeat, you you know? And um, so you said like something about your, your, your trainer personality. So like, Mm -hmm. actually, before I go, go to that, I I was going to do a sweatshop. So um, Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, so in your May performance lane, like, what do you think is the, like, how would you describe an NBA workout in terms of structure, intensity, mm-hmm. like, like attributes? You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily like the ins and outs, but like, exactly. how, that's what knows for sure. Yeah. So, like, how would you yeah. describe okay. an NBA? Yeah. So, I mean, I would just describe an NBA workout as intense um, and not necessarily guys running full speed um, 100%. Um, but it's more about your mentality, more about your focus, uh, more about paying attention to detail. Um, that's that's probably the biggest thing I'm taking away from being around pros um, on the day in day out basis. Um, it's just the attention to detail, the focus that they have. Um, you know, 
as a trainer, you usually don't have to repeat yourself to these NBA guys. You don't have to really explain things too deep into detail. They already they're already locked in. They you know they've been doing this for X amount of years now. So you know they're they're ready. And you know this is no longer I'm playing for the love of the game. I'm playing for the love of my school. Like man, it's bread on the line. Like forget all that other stuff. So this is this is for real. This is serious. Like you know what I'm saying. So it's it's no longer it's no longer you have to really keep guys' attention, um, have to remind them of a million things. It's just a whole lot of attention to detail. And of course, uh, these guys are working hard every time, um, going going as hard as they can. Um, but sometimes just paying attention and knowing like, hey man, my body's not really feeling 100% right now. I can, I can be in tune and do what I need to do with recovery. Or that means like maybe I know that I need to take it, take my day off and be in discipline instead of being like, you know, I'm gonna just keep going and keep running on this nagging injury. Um, so it, like I said, it's just attention to detail. Um, just being locked in, these guys, these guys are so locked in. It's crazy. So, so and also in like these workouts, right? So, <laughs> when you guys go and put the work in for a summer, how right. do they how do they schedule it? Do they schedule it like like two two week intervals, like for like mm-hmm. out of the four months, or is it like yo for a whole month we just buy to stay South Florida with May performance? Yeah. In yeah, so I mean, yeah, it just depends on the situation, um, where the guy is living, um, you know, and just how that how that whole living situation is. Because um, obviously, if a guy can be down here, of course, we'd want him to be down here as long as possible, you know, to get that work in. Um, but I mean, it, it, it ranges. Those guys who come down for a weekend, those guys who come down for a week, a month, three months, you know, it just, it just depends. Um, but usually, uh, we'll have a couple guys who lock in for the whole summer. Um, and obviously now with COVID, the whole schedule is kind of thrown out of whack um, with a lot of the sports, especially the NBA. Um, but yeah, so guys usually be here the whole offseason, you know, and just locked in. Um, and obviously, you know, guys have multiple trainers. It's not necessarily, you don't have to be locked in just with us the whole time. Um, and we respect that and we're cool with that. Um, as long as it's when you're with us, it's 100%. That's all I care about. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah. yeah, so we definitely have some great cool. And progressing, let, let's let's get a, a tour of of the sweatshop. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Take, take your camera device and give us a little, <laughs> got you, little, you know, little yeah, virtual me a tour. Of, little, you know what? Little, what little, like, I was gonna be cute or whatever. With the yeah, little ring session. Yeah. So hold on one second. All right. So for sure, let me flip this joint. All right. So you know what I'm saying? We got the little. We got editing set up. Here. We got a little boxing set up. Um, obviously got all the dumbbells over here, kettlebells, got some title tanks. Uh, obviously got all the bands set up, uh, the ladder, all that good stuff. Got some weights, got the trap bar over here. You know what I mean? We get it in. Got the uh, got the battle ropes. Got some PVC pipes. It's a little messy right now, but you know what I'm saying? We actually about to get it in in a little bit. Yeah, yeah messy my- is beautiful. Messy is beautiful. Yeah, messy. Bro. Sure, that, means my ears. Here. that means we're working in here. Yeah. yeah. We don't want to clean gym. You don't want a simple clean gym. Come on. Yeah, man. We got the bench press um, over here. It's squat rack. So, yeah, man. We did it in for sure. All right. So, so what's the inspiration behind the Sweatshop 954? What, what, what gave you the idea to be in the midst of the pandemic to improvise and, and find this hustle? Find yeah, man. So, Absolutely. I think I think the biggest thing with that was um, just talking to my mom, um, and of course, like just knowing my dad wanted for me. The biggest thing was just giving me a place where I could make my own dreams come true, um, and I didn't have to wait on somebody else uh, to be able to really go about what I wanted. Um, so, you know, I just been talking about it, like you know how crazy would that be if I had a gym in the house, like you know, so I wouldn't have to go nowhere. I could just rock out right here and do my thing. Um, and it's funny, one weekend um, I went out of town. And uh, my mom, my girlfriend, my best friend, uh, my best friend Gabby, and some of my other homies, um, they came together and they cleared out the whole garage, um, and set it up for me because I had already been training um, some of my boys um, already in the garage. Just you know, I would I would move my mom's car out the way, and we just get it in on the pavement, have my little mats or whatever, um, and we would just get it in there just um, just to get some work in. Um, yeah. I know the guys was getting ready to go overseas to hoop. Um, and he was just down to work, so I said, man, let's do it. <laughs> so we moved things out the way um, and got it in, just out the mud for real. Um, and so once we were doing that, I went out of town for a weekend, I think I had to go back to Pittsburgh to see some of my friends. And uh, I came back 
opened the garage. Everybody surprised me. They had the whole setup. They had turf down. Um, had a couple mats ready to go. Had the whole half of the garage cleared out. Um, and had me ready. So, man, it was amazing, and it was just an inspiration to to be able to see that. I mean, that many people believed in me to the point where they got up off their butt to come and clean up a crib that they don't live in. You know what I mean? To be able to help me fulfill a dream that I had. Um, so that was that was just inspiring and amazing. Um, and just you know really pushed me to be successful because now it's not just for me. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm doing this for for a lot of people who who put their faith and effort and time and love and all these things into into what I've done. So yeah, man. And I like to call that. That's called. Uh, that's not a coincidence. That's confirmation. You know, yeah. things when things like that happen, that's just confirmation that this is what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, and and that's also the benefit of having a girl in like your rotation of top friends. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of homies is not really. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. You gotta rock with you, V. <laughs> Would you want one bottle? <laughs> they could be like yeah. that. Yo, shout out G Web, man. That's yeah, cool. yeah, that's that's amazing. Shout out G Web. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, you know, I wanna to to wrap up the conversation with um, just uh, one. What would you describe since you're a personal trainer? You know what I'm saying? What would you describe your training style to be like? Mm -hmm. For well, those always curious. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would describe it just as functional movement. Um, and just being able to do things that are going to translate to whatever arena you're moving into, whether that be sports, on the court, on the field, or whether that just be everyday life. You want to improve your flexibility. Um, you don't want to hurt while you're walking and running. Um, you want to just be a weekend warrior doing your thing, um, lose weight, whatever that may be. Um, I just want to be able to give you things that can translate over. Um, and we're not just wasting our time in here just doing a lot of things just to make you sweat. Um, so I think the biggest thing is just that carryover. And then um, to 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 go on that, like if you had, if I were to interview like one of your clients and right. I said like, yo, describe uh, a, a sweat shop a, a sweatshop session, like what would what would they say? <laughs> Hopefully, um, they would say that. Um, they just felt like they made it made fitness fun. I um, mean, it made it something that wasn't necessarily a chore. Um, it made it more like uh, like a challenge, like something that you enjoy, that's something you can attack, um, and, and that you felt empowered to do these things. Because um, you know, a lot of people, you know, they kind of shy away from fitness because they might not necessarily know whatever exactly to do, um, or they might feel like, oh, like this is only something that athletes should be doing. This is only something that guys who are trying to go to the league should be doing. I don't need to be doing all that. Um, but now, like, these are all things that anybody can do. Um, you know what I'm saying? If you just put your mind to it and you're patient and you're consistent, um, as long as you, you know, do all those things, I mean, anything is possible. So I just want to be able to give people um, that empowerment. Like, yeah, you can train like an athlete. That's on my God for my God T. Um, you know, that's, that's his mantra made by see more results. You know what I mean? Uh, so, you know, doing that whole thing um, and just, you know, helping people be empowered and feeling good about themselves. That is better. Yeah, that's that's beautiful, and I think that's that's honestly that's important in, in fitness and knowing that like fitness is there's so many different types of of, of fitness. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because even if you look at, you know, we look at professional athletes. Our offensive lineman is a professional athlete. They're honestly defense alignment are some of the most athletic people you hey, know man, I, hey i'll be the first to tell you my line brother jared joe smith that <laughs> brother he was an offensive line he, he just finished up the season with the uh with the Oakland Raiders, oh, the biggest raiders now um yeah. but he, he just finished up the season there doing his thing playing offensive line and when i tell you that joke can move he fast big <laughs> strong doing all the things you be like man i thought you were just so fast like can move his feet can't do nothing you know what i'm saying but yeah. you know you see him and run that 40 you change your mind real quick you know what i mean but it's just giving that respect to you know a wider range of people um and just understanding that you're capable of more than you think um you know when it comes to your body and when it comes to things that you know physically you think you can't do and i promise you give yourself a week of just trying and i promise you it's gonna be a whole lot easier if it's not if it's not perfect yeah give you give yourself respect 
You know what I'm yeah. saying? I think that yeah. that's an important message. Give yourself the respect to to try training. And if you know yeah. that, you know, training is not something that you're you're not motivated to do, that's okay. That's why there's the sweatshop 954 for you to, you know, try. You, you should respect your, yourself enough to try if you know it's going to benefit you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Situation where, like, you know, it, fitness could, could benefit mm -hmm. you. And that's the beauty, the beauty of having a, a trainer is that they can, mm -hmm. like, someone like you can walk them through their goals. And, Absolutely. you know, oh, this is what you're aiming for? All right, we can make it customized to you. You know, yeah. I, I think that's, that's 2021. Everything is customized. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's letting people know, like, hey, training is customizable. You know, it's not the days right. of the one, the three programs, and that's it. Yeah. Like, everybody do pull ups, everybody do squats, everybody do that. Like, nah, it don't have to be like that. Mm -hmm. it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be like that. Absolutely. Yeah, everyone has degrees on this. So we figured we done concocted yeah. mad different, yeah. you know, strategies. Yeah. So. In making the sweatshop, now let's talk about, you know, some perspective. Like, mm -hmm. so let's say I'm a youngin. I just graduated high school. And right. I want to do what you do. And I don't want mm -hmm. to go to college because I know that I don't need to go to college, per se, to, to uh, be a trainer. But I want mm -hmm. to do a business like you, you know? So, mm -hmm. like, what would your advice be to youngin like me on, like, how to be a, a business in what you're doing yeah so i think one thing i want to be clear about um, when it comes to this is you might not necessarily um need a degree in exercise science to, to go on and do these things mm -hmm. um but you do have to educate yourself um it might not be through you know sitting through a college classroom and going through a four-year program um, but you have to be able to sit down and teach yourself anatomy physiology uh, biomechanics um, being able to lock in on all those topics to really, you know, give your clients, your your prospective clients, you know, like an actually good experience. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to just be telling people anything like just, just something you looked up off the internet. You know what I'm saying? You want to actually be able to be confident in your knowledge um, of the body, how it works and how to optimize its work. Um, so you just need to be able to educate yourself on those things. And the biggest thing I would say is just trial and error. I mean, you just you just have to put yourself out there, whether that's coming up with your own workout plans for your friends, sometimes for free, that's how it works. Um, giving them workouts, um, trying things out on your own body. Um, you know, that's always, you know, the best canvas to work with is your own self. So you're able to really internalize how these different movements feel, uh, ways to be able to coach others to do them well. Um, and just being able to, number one, take your own fitness to another level, I think it's important. Because um, nobody loves a coach who doesn't look like he should be coaching, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I, so I, yeah. I hate that going. I hate what yeah. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. And that's, you know what I'm saying? That's not a knock on anybody, you know, doing their thing. Um, but I just think it's important, you know, to be able to portray yourself as competent um, to doing your thing. So, yeah, I just think it's important to be able to immerse yourself um, in the knowledge that's keeping yourself abreast of different um, studies that come out. Uh, periodically as uh, keeping yourself up on the know of just you know different conferences that might be coming up um you know all those things and then I guess the second thing would be just networking connecting yourself with somebody who's doing what you want to do um and locking in foot and step with them just to be able to be like, all right what I'm this is what I'm doing now this is what you know I think I should be doing what are some of your suggestions um to help me get to where I want to be or either where you are or where I want to be that's kind of similar. Um, so I just think those two biggest things is educating yourself and networking are those two biggest things. And, you know, once you do those two things, you know, things will start to fall into place. I think I go back to, to Master P's book. Uh, mm -hmm. And he said the first thing you do in order to be successful is research. You know what I'm saying? Research is the, the number one thing before mm -hmm. you start plotting on, plotting on the success that you want to have. Like, if you don't have mm -hmm. the research on what to expect and why to expect it then mm -hmm. and i mean yeah you if you just take action and then adjust but maybe you know you don't increase your chances by doing that instead of just yeah. having research going in and i hope you know those prospective high school kids that 
don't want to go to college, but want to do what Brian does, got those gyms and take those four yeah. classes right. at uh, BC. Anthropo I was <laughs> anthropology, <Yeah>. physiology, <laughs> bio yeah. movements, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah. I, I think it's to your point. Education is very, 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 very important. Yeah. Yeah, it's top tier. The only, I mean, you don't only get educated at school. You know what I mean? There's, there's many different places where you learn and you grow, you know what I'm saying? You give yourself opportunities to you know, learn these lessons in life. So yeah, just, just lock in and take advantage of every opportunity you're given. Um, and things, things will start to fall into place. What is a book or a documentary that you've mm -hmm. seen um, listen to Red over the last couple years that mm -hmm. gave you some game, like gave you some perspective or gave you a perspective experience that like a perspective that said, oh, I didn't even, that was useful. You hear me? Uh, yeah, no, I froze for a second. But you said, you said give you a book or something that I've. Uh... Yeah, a book or documentary that gave you like useful everyday life advice or, you know, practical life experience. All right. For sure, for sure. Um, so I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a huge reader, um, especially um, in college. You, I, I, I'm gonna speak for myself. I fell away from it um, just because, you know, I was reading so much for classes. You know, I was like, I'm about to pick up a book for fun. Like, that ain't fun. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I'm about to just do my own thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I definitely got away from reading. Um, but one thing, um, you know, that I watched that really, um, probably like me in a little bit was the last dance the jordan documentary mm -hmm. um just being able to watch that every weekend um seeing his tenacity his like intensity like the way that you know like we talk about the meme like you know and i took that person but like for real like you know sometimes you, you do like you know what i mean um and just being able to see see his drive and see his his want for greatness um which I think is, you know, the biggest thing. That's, you know, my mantra for the sweatshop is let's be great. You know, that's something I say every day. I say to my friends all the time, like, let's be great today. Let's, you know, let's really be great. Because there's a difference between being good and being okay and being mediocre and then being great. You know what I mean? I'm trying to, I'm trying to be top tier. You know, what's, I can't. What's the difference between good and great? Um, I would just say <laughs> the difference between good and great is, let me see if I can put it into like a little like story scenario. Um, I think good, good is just doing what you're told to do, and great is doing what you know you need to do. You know, those are two different things. Um, being good is like you come in and you see something on the, like a little workout on the board, you go through it, and you're just like, all right, bet. You know, I could do some more, but you know, I saw Coach have for me today, so I'm chilling. Being great is you know getting that done, and you feeling yourself being like, all right, you know, I really could get that extra, get that extra set in. You know, I really could. Um, you know, go home and ice my feet and stretch, you know what I'm saying? Wait, make sure I go to bed on time, make sure I'm waking up early in the morning, make sure I'm eating right. Um, making sure I'm doing my homework before I even get to get to have to deal with, you know, dealing with my mom and her talking about something, what you doing? Uh, you ain't get your work done. Like, you know, like things like that, you know, just taking it to the next level. Um, that's what I consider being great. Just doing your best in all things, just giving 100% effort. And then lastly, I'll end it with, um this is this is a personal question of mine like mm -hmm. um how do you balance having a successful good relationship with like being an entrepreneur and like mm -hmm. you know inconsistency of like availability and and right. time and attention and you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying like how do you how do you finesse that yeah i mean it's definitely difficult um and it's just a stream of communication that has to be had. Um, just being able to talk to her and just being like, hey, look, I need to get done something right now that came up right now. And I know I didn't tell you, and I know I said we were gonna do X, Y, Z, but I can't. Um, you know, that's just on your significant other being able to understand like, hey, he's in the grind right now. He's trying to get to where he needs to get to. And as long as that's actually what you're doing, then I mean, I don't see how that can be possible. Um, you know, it's just, of course, when you do have that free time, you make sure to, Take care of her and take her out and go do what you need to do and spend that time um, and grow the relationship. But yeah, it's just it's just a stream of communication and you know hopefully they're down with your dream as much as you are. You know what I'm saying? I'm lucky uh, to be with somebody who cares about what I do um, and is excited for what I do and is passionate about what I do as well. Um, so yeah, I'm a lucky guy. Just you know, it's, it's kind of easy. <laughs>
Yeah. All right. You make you make it sound you make it sound very very. <laughs> That's, that's that's a beautiful thing and then um that you makes it easy you yeah. Know yeah 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 I, I, I mean honestly i don't know how it goes so that's why i'm trying to ask you how does it go <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm trying to ask you i'm trying to figure it out but because hey don't i always i seen some mean where it's like you know what i'm saying age don't mean wisdom you know what oh, i'm saying absolutely not absolutely not because i know i know a whole lot of young people who who are so knowledgeable of, on life and you know so mature and have learned so many things and i know a whole lot of adults who don't know anything you know what i'm saying who are idiots you know ignorant all of those things you know what i'm saying so yeah that, that's definitely not true mm -hmm. yep and then uh b before i let you go this was this was an amazing uh conversation um it was amazing to, to hear what you got going on to hear what you what you've been doing and, and to see like just your journey you see your shop you know what i'm saying you know like you sharing your story of like you can train with nba players and or if i don't know anyone that's cool or oh this is how i do it i i just have to ask and you know and put myself out there is it's those stories that you know are, are important and, and thank you so much for your time bro no problem man thank you for the opportunity